everyone, and welcome back to Liz Sews. I thought I'd take a small break from the Bra 101 series to do a mini tutorial on how to draft the pattern for this garter belt. This garter belt will be using detachable garters that I purchased from what Katie did. In order to get started, you will only need three measurements, your waist, your hip, and the distance between your waist and your hip. Let's get started. I'm starting out with just a big piece of paper and I wanna draw a line that is one half my hip. So my personal hip is 20 or 40 inches. So I'm gonna draw a line that is 20 inches long along the bottom of my paper. And then the lines I'm gonna draw on either side, I wanna go up the distance from my waist to my hip. So if you guys have watched my panty drafting tutorial, I talk about uh, how to measure your waist to your hip. So that is a good reference for that. So in my case, it is nine inches from my waist to my hip. And then lastly, we just wanna connect the top of that rectangle. So now I wanna divide this into four equal parts. Uh, because mine equals 20 inches, that's pretty easy, because that's five, five, five. Okay, so now we're going to need to do just a little bit of math. So uh, what I wanna find is my hip minus my waist. So the difference between my waist measurement and my hip measurement. So my hip is 40 inches and I subtract 30 inches because that is my waist measurement and I get 10 inches. So that's my difference. And then because we're only working on half of the pattern right now, I need to divide that by two and I get 10 inches divided by two, I get five inches. And then finally, I want to take five inches and divide it by eight. And luckily for me, five divided by eight is five eighths. So that makes it really, really easy. So what I'm going to do is measure out five eighths from all of my vertical lines. So you just have one, two on either side of this line, on either side of this line, on either side of this line, and then five eighths on the side of this line. So now I'm just gonna put those marks in. Okay, so you can see if, if you've done this right, you should have eight tick marks and that's because you divided your half difference by eight. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So what we need to do is we need to sort of reduce this top line, which is our waist, while keeping our bottom line the same. And we're gonna do that uh, right now, sort of just by drawing in darts. So when I, I wanna connect these, all these tick marks down to the center point below with those lines that we drew in earlier. So now you should have something that looks like this. So I'm going to cut out this rectangle here before moving on to the next step. So now we need to sort of get rid of all of the fabric that's inside these sort of darts. So for the sides of it, that's really easy. We can just cut on that diagonal line and that fabric is gone. And then we could just have these as darts in the finished garment, but I would prefer to have this all in one piece. So what I'm going to do is slash, I'm gonna cut along the, the center lines that we had marked in the beginning that were, that divided this into four equal parts. So I'm just gonna cut there and I'm not gonna cut all the way to the end, but just barely. Okay, so if you cut all the way through, it's not the end of the world, but ideally you want something like this so that you can pivot your pieces. So all you need to do is overlap 
the two lines that you have drawn that form your dart. So I overlap them, make sure that they are laying on top of each other, and then I'm gonna tape this into place. I'm gonna do that for each of the three darts. So overlap, make sure the lines are sitting on top of each other and tape this into place. Okay, so this one you can see I've just detached it. I didn't mean to, but um, so it's not the end of the world. You can just make sure that you have them lined up. Okay, so now we have a piece of, of pattern that should be half of our waist along the top and half of our hip along the bottom. So you could continue working with it like this, but I'm going to trace it over onto a new piece of paper so that I can continue drafting. So on mine, this, this waist curve is quite smooth and it doesn't look like I need to do much manipulation on it, but depending on what the difference is between your waist to hip, yours might look a little bit more angular. And all you need to do is just sort of like smooth this out into one curve and try to stay as close as you can to the edges you had before. So essentially what we have now is a big curved waistband. So this is going to be our center front, and this is gonna be our center back. Uh, the center front, we are going to cut on the fold. So it's gonna be one piece. Now I also want to draw in my halfway points that I had before. So let's see. And those halfway points are going to be where those two lines overlapped in our dart. So center front, center back, this is going to be the side seam. And so theoretically, this line right here should be the center of our leg and this should be the center of our posterior. Um, so now I need to draw in sort of my arcs and shapes. So I want to have this garter belt have two attach points and I'm gonna attach in the center front of the leg. I don't necessarily wanna attach dead center in the back because um, it might be uncomfortable to sit on. So I think I'm going to move this one a little bit further over. So I know I have five inches between my center back or five inches between the middle of the butt cheek and the side seam. So I'm gonna probably move this over maybe two inches. Kind of just have to do what you think looks best or what you think will be the most comfortable. I'm gonna say two inches. So I'm gonna have my garters attach to this one and this one. So, when I'm coming out from my center front, I wanna make sure that I am coming out from this line at a 90 degree angle. That way it makes a nice clean curve or clean connection point where it folds. So I need to line up my ruler with a straight edge and then come out at a 90 degree angle for a little while. I've done probably like three quarters of an inch. And then I am just going to make a curve that connects to this. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm gonna do the center back one as well right now. So I'm gonna have my garter close with a hook and eye. So it's gonna be a lot, like the front, I do want it to sort of cover up my tummy a little bit, but in the back, I don't want it any longer than this hook and eye so that it makes it easy to get in. So that's gonna be where my back starts. And then just like we did for the front, sort of create a curve 
that's going to meet up with our garter attachment point. And then of course the last one we need to do is just attach this one to this one with another arc. And I want to stay sort of similar to the way I have done on my tummy. So I think the, the apex of the arc should be about there. That looks similar. And I just tried to sketch that in what is roughly halfway between those two points. So now we have that. And that should be really all we need for the pattern piece. Of course, all of this stuff is no longer needed. And this piece right here will be our garter belt. So one more thing before I copy this over, I need to think about my closure. So if you wanted this to be one piece of elastic or stretchy material that you can just sort of like pull up over your hips like underwear, uh, you can leave it like this, but I'm deciding that I wanna use a hook and eye closure in the back of it. And so the hook and eye closure is two inches wide. So I need to sort of remove that two inches from this because we already measured this to be our exact waist measurement. So since this is already 30 inches, if I were to then put the hook and eye closure in, it would make my waist 32 inches and then it would start dropping lower on my hips where I don't want it to be. So as I had said, the hook and eye closure is two inches wide. And because this represents half, I need to take out one inch from my pattern piece. So if I take out an inch here and then an inch on the other side of this, that gives me a total of two inches. And I just want to make sure that I still have the same width. Yeah. So that hook and I will still attach there. I might make it a little narrower, but that should work. So I'm going to copy this over onto another piece of paper just so it looks a little bit clearer. Okay, so now we need to look at seam allowance. So I'm deciding that I wanted to use fold over elastic for covering up all of these arcs as well as the waist. So I don't need to add any seam allowance there just because fold, elast fold over elastic is gonna go over that edge and doesn't take any of the fabric away. Uh, if you were using something like a Pico elastic, you would need to add a seam allowance that is equal to the width of the Pico elastic. So if you had 3 eighths of an inch Pico, you would want to add three eighths of an inch seam allowance everywhere that Pico is going to be. So the center front is going to be cut on a fold, so I don't need any seam allowance there. And then the center back, we've already sort of accounted for the fact that we have our hook and eye going in there. So I am pretty much done with this basic pattern. The only thing left is that I want to add some style details to mine, and that is going to be putting some of the satiny fabric in little triangles along the front. So taking this basic pattern here, uh, I just want to draw in where I want that satin fabric to be. And I think I want, let's see, I want a little triangle, probably just in the very front, and I'm going to center it over that garter attachment point. So I want it like this. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna have black fabric here, this will be satin, and this will be black. And I think I'm gonna continue the black all the way around. Uh, I don't really like that angle, and my angle this one out just a little bit more. I mean, at this point, when you're choosing style lines and stuff like that, it's really all personal choice. Yeah, that looks a lot better. Okay, so once again, it's time to copy it over. You'll notice a lot of times in drafting, it's just a lot of copying. I'm gonna reuse some of this paper here. So the first thing that I wanna do is copy out that little bit of triangle that's going to be my satin. And then where the satin is attaching on either side to fabric, I need to add in seam allowances. So for this one, I'm gonna add in a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So 
So this is going to be the satin panel piece that sits in my very front. Is I'm also going to trace out this panel right here, which is going to be my front panel, which will be cut on the fold. Okay. And then just like we did for our satin piece, we need to add seam allowances where it's going to connect to that one. So we'll add a quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now if you prefer working in a half of an inch seam allowance or something like that, you can certainly do that. Just whatever you feel most comfortable sewing in. What. And a lot of times I like to make sure that it's marked on my pattern like this so that even if I forget what I've drafted it for, I can go back and look and say, oh yeah, that's definitely a quarter of an inch. So now we have my front panel, which is cut on the fold. I have my satin, satin panel. Um, and then we need to do the last panel, which is this big one right here. And rather than trace that one out, I'm just going to, we said this was the line that we liked using. I'm just going to add my quarter of an inch seam allowance to that. That way I don't have to cut it out again. And this will be the back panel piece. So if you wanna just test everything out, you can overlay these with the seams overlapped just to make sure everything is looking nice and tidy. And yep, that looks like we are having a complete piece. Everything looks like it's matching up nicely. So now I have the three pieces to make my garter belt. I hope you guys have enjoyed this little mini drafting tutorial and I will see you guys next time. Take care.